welcome back to Gapy's Garden. It is June 12th and this is the only in-ground bed where I'm growing stuff and we've got some kale here on the this edge and there's six different varieties and we've got a bare spot here so I'm still trying to figure out what I'm gonna plant in this area. Um, I've got a few extra plants that I didn't sell that I might just throw in here and then that here is I believe catnip or catmint that keeps coming back from last year. And then we've got our corn planted, I think last, maybe it was two weeks ago. So I've got four different varieties in here. We have the glass gem corn and earth tones dent corn. And then a couple of Peruvian corns that are supposed to get super tall. Um, I'm not sure, I don't, I've heard Peruvian corn doesn't grow well here. So it's kind of an experiment and I've only got a few of them. So we'll see what happens. And then we've got some California poppies that are coming up along the edge that I'm hoping will help keep the bunny out that's in the backyard because it, I'm afraid it's going to start eating my plants. And I think it has eaten a few things already. And then we have a volunteer squash here that I originally thought was a goldini because that's the goldini squash is the only one I grew in this bed last year, but it's getting some green squashes and the goldinis come out yellow, so that's definitely not what this is. So it'll be interesting to see what that is. It might have been something that came in from the compost that I put on the bed. Uh, let's go take a look at some of the raised beds. So here's the onions and the garlic. So these are the scallions here on the edge of the bed. And then I've got the yellow parma here and I've I did lose quite a few of them for some reason. The ones that are close to the garlic seem to be doing a lot better. Um, but almost this whole this whole area here is just bare, so I might end up... Um, maybe I'll plant some bush beans or something in that spot. And the garlic here is doing really well. This is the soft neck garlic here. And then the hard neck garlic is just starting to put out scapes. So I usually harvest these garlic scapes, and my favorite way to eat them is grilled with some oil and some salt and pepper. Um, but I've also made pesto and added it to stir fries as well. The lettuce here, this is the outrageous romaine, is getting huge. I've harvested a few of them, um, but they're all just getting super big and I need to get those harvested soon. I planted some speckled or freckled romaine in the middle there, so it's just starting to grow. And I do have a bunny back here um, that I think might be eating some stuff. So that one there, it looks like it might have gotten eaten, but it could also be the slugs. I'm not really sure which one is eating them. And then we've got garlic chives and regular chives, which I've been harvesting. Um, they just finished flowering, which I'm making a, a vinegar, a chive blossom vinegar that's about ready to bottle up. And we've got our herbs here. This is the herb bed. Um, I've got the pineapple, or I'm not sure if it's pineapple sage, but it's some kind of a variegated sage. And then I've got the this is the uh, marjoram that I started from seed this year. And then I bought this lemon thyme and silver thyme um, from a no local nursery uh, a few weeks ago and got that planted. And then this is another sage that's gone to flower and I just let it flower because the bees really, really like these flowers. And we've got a rosemary here which I s bought um, a few weeks ago or maybe a month ago now and got that planted in there. And I think this is a spinach, one of those perennial spinaches. And we've got, oh, and this is the, the weed that I most hate. This is a morning glory. I'm constantly pulling those out of everywhere. Um, and then we've got valerian here, which is also flowering. Oop, there's a bee on that one. The bees really like the valerian flowers as well. And then this, I forgot, I always forget what it's called, but I looked it up. And this is rue which is more of a medicinal herb, I think. So I haven't actually used it for anything yet. I don't think it's supposed to taste very good. And then I just recently harvested the golden oregano. So it's all cut back there. And I think that's about all that's in the bed. There's a, I think some volunteer sunflower that's coming up there. And then I've got a lot of volunteer borage and chamomile that's kind of growing in the pathway here. Uh, looks like that is about ready to harvest those. And then this bed, I've got some Swiss chard that I, this is actually from 
Swiss chard that I, I think I overwintered this one. I can't remember, but look at how big these leaves are. They are just huge. And then I've got some lettuce interplanted in between these. And I can't remember what variety this lettuce is, um, but it was from seed that I saved a few years ago. And then I got this orac here from a plant swap a few weeks ago. Maybe it was last week. Um, and it's doing pretty good. And this is my dwarf um, crab apple tree. And the variety is called, see, does it say on here? It's a Whitney, Whitney apple. And it's supposed to get larger crab apples than most crab apples, and it's supposed to taste better too. So we'll see how that does. And then this is my Brayburn apple. It's loaded with apples this year. So I'm excited for that one. And I've got some shuck sand strawberries growing underneath. And under the shade cloth, I just harvested a ton of mint. So I've got the mint drying underneath there. And then this is the Rokoto bed. So I've got five Rokoto or Manzanos. And let's see, I actually went over the peppers in my previous video. So I'm not gonna go over those again. If you wanna see those, you can watch that. And then this is kind of a miscellaneous bed. I've got a couple of tomatillos. This is the green tomatillo. And then on, over here I've got the purple tomatillo, which is growing a lot better because I, for one reason I started it a lot earlier than the green ones. And then we've got mizuna, which is a, a I use it for salad greens, but it's a, a nice herb or a nice green. And I've got some volunteer dill coming up in here too, which I might end up pulling out. And this here is a Brussels sprout. And back here is a kaolette, which is similar to a Brussels sprout, but it gets these little kale balls that grow up along the, the stem. It's not really producing any yet. I'll probably take out some of these leaves so that they can start balling up along the, the stem there. And let's go take a look. Um, oh, this is a Brooks plum. And it's got a fair amount of plums on it as well, which I haven't seen a lot of the last few years. And this here is, I think these are the seascape strawberries, which is an ever-bearing strawberry. And we've got a, a volunteer tomato in there, so I might just let that grow. And these are the beehives, doing well. And here we have some more of that lettuce, and it's, I need to trim that. I've been feeding it to the chickens, actually. But I've got the squashes planted in this bed. So we've got, this is the delicata. Um, I'm not seeing any flowers on this one yet, but it's doing pretty good. And then this one here is the butternut brulee, which I'm really looking forward to that one. And it's got, it looks like it's got a few flower buds there, but I don't think any have opened up yet. And I also had a loofah in this bed, but it ended up not making it. So I'm gonna plant a luxurious pumpkin in this bed. Oh, look at that big bumblebee that just landed on the lettuce. That thing is huge. Anyway, um, this is the Buttercup Burgess, and we've actually got some fruit setting on that one. I'm not sure if it's been pollinated or not, so we'll find out, but it's been getting a lot of flowers, so we should have some fruits on there soon, and it's getting pretty long. It's already coming out of the bed. And then here's the mint, and this is actually the lemon balm. Look at how, how much lemon balm we have there. So I really need to get that trimmed back because it's going to be flowering here pretty soon. I might, I might let some of it flower, but I, I want to get that um, pruned back before it falls over. So this is all the mint that I, I just trimmed recently. So we've got chocolate mint here, and this is the regular, I guess, spearmint that I cut back. And then this is berries and cream mint. And in the middle we have ginger mint, and that's pineapple mint, the variegated one. And then this is the new one that I got this year, which is called, oh, what is it called? It's supposed to taste like coffee, um, hazelnut. It's called ice hazelnut. So it kind of tastes like iced hazelnut coffee, which is kind of interesting. And here we have the asparagus, which is all grown up. If, if you've never seen asparagus after it gets tall, it's basically a big, huge fern. And some of them have little berries, so you can see. I think these are the male, if I have that right. 
the male ones get berries and the female ones don't. But you can actually grow new plants from the seeds that it drops. All right, let's take a look at the tomato bed. Um, these are actually, let's look at the beans first in this bed. So I have two varieties of beans here. Um, we have Pellegrini on, I believe this side is Pellegrini. And actually I can't remember which ones I have on the other side. I'll have to look those up. But these are all the, the large tomatoes that I have. They all have flowers, I believe, but I don't think there's any that have set any fruit yet. Um, but I have for companions, marigolds. So every other plant is a marigold. And then I've also got a, these are dwarf sunflowers. So they're actually getting ready to open up here. I don't have any that have opened, but we're getting there. And I actually lost one of the sunflowers to, I think, a vole. Um, but I had, I had a sunflower in this spot here, and I put this shade cloth with a, I don't think I've caught anything yet, yeah. I've got a mouse trap in there with some sunflower seeds in it. Um, I had pretty good luck catching voles in the greenhouse that way, but so far I um, haven't caught them yet. And then we've got corn, so I've got I think four different varieties of corn that I'm trying this year. And then we've got a few onions. And I actually harvested some of these onions. They're ones that I started from seed. Well, not seed, um, from bulbs in the fall that I got from a plant swap. Well, actually it was the seed swap, the super duper seed swap on Instagram. And those are doing really good, but some of them are starting to flower. I might let this one here flower, but I've been pulling the rest and harvesting them. So here's the Goldini. So this is one um, that I grew last year. So you can see lots of yellow squash coming out of there. I think there's like five or six coming out. And then the other summer squash is the Costata, uh, Costata Romanesco. So it's kind of a striped zucchini. You can see a few coming out there. So they should be ready to harvest maybe next week. Okay, and then this bed over here, I've got a couple of peppers which I went over in my last video. And I've also got a sugar baby watermelon, which is starting to flower, it looks like. So we've got a flower there that just opened up. The leaves are kind of curling inwards for some reason. I'm not sure what's going on there. And then I've got some, I think these are Brunswick cabbages that are just starting to head up now. As you can see, they're starting to ball up in the middle. And I have had some cabbage worm issues with these. You can see all the holes. So I pulled one big cabbage worm off of it the other day, but I think there's still some in here. Uh, but I haven't seen any more, but I'm sure there are some in here. They, they hide really easily. So I've got this space here. I'm going to be planting some Chinese cabbage in this area, and I'll be using that for making kimchi. And we have some lettuce. This is a pink Let's see, what is that? Pink plume celery? Sorry, I meant celery, not lettuce. Um, pink plume celery and red venture celery on that side. So here is the monster lettuce. So I've got two varieties of lettuces in here. I've got some of that speckled romaine that I showed you in the other bed, and it's growing a lot better over here. And then I think these are starting to bolt, actually. So this other lettuce is from 21 Acres, a local farm. They weren't sure what the variety is, and oh, look, got some bad bugs in here. I don't like those guys. And then we've got cucumbers on the other side that I have growing up this trellis here. And they're just starting to climb, it looks like. So I'm just kind of training it to grow inside the trellis. And this one here, I'm just gonna pull it through so that it starts climbing. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I've got like I think three different ones in here. And I've got, let's see, poinsett is one. I think I've got a lemon cucumber. And I've got maybe a Boston pickling, I think. So I've got a little bit of everything. And then we've got some more onions. And again, there, there's a bare spot here that I'll probably plant some be bush beans or something in. Actually, I have some extra um, onion sets that are in the greenhouse, so I could probably fill in that area because these are the Elsa Craigs 
and that's what I have extras of. Um, it might be a little late to get them in the ground, but I'll try and see how it goes. And let's see, there's only one more bed left to show you, and it's on the other side of the yard. These are my chickens. And we've got a broody girl in there that's going to get some babies um, this weekend, hopefully. Okay, so here is the other tomato bed. This is the cherry tomatoes. And I've actually got some tomatoes set on... Let's show you some of these tomatoes. So this is the Berries Crazy Cherry, one of my favorites. And it's got a few tomatoes there that you can see. And for... Companions, I've got another sunflower. This one is not a dwarf sunflower, so that's one of the giant ones, I think. So I'm not sure how tall it's going to get, but it looks like I don't see a flower yet, so it's probably going to get a little taller. And I've got a volunteer tomato there, so I might just let that one grow. And if I need to, I'll kind of clip it um, to the cage that's over here. And we've got some, look at that morning glory coming out from the weed cloth that I need to pull out. Um, we've got some uh, nasturtiums, which is one of my favorite companions. And we've got some red amaranth right here, a couple of them. These were, I think these were volunteers actually from last year. So we've got one there and one here. And we've got some more marigolds that are just about to bloom. And these are some zinnias. So I've got a few different varieties of zinnias. So I've got, I think, two on this side and two on the other side. Let's see if there's more tomatoes set. I know there's at least one on the other side. Let's see. Um, sun gold, I think. Oh, so this is the sun gold. It's getting really tall and has flowers, but I don't see any tomatoes set on it yet. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's one with some tomatoes. So this is the Matt's Wild Cherry. So I think that's the only other one that has some tomatoes on it. So on the other end of this bed, I just planted some radishes last week. So I've got three different varieties of radishes. This one here is the black Spanish radish, which is one of my favorites. But I only had a few seeds left of it, so I've only got, I think, maybe six, five or six of them coming up. And I can't recall what other ones these are. And I've got some potatoes in here that I planted really late that have not come up yet. So we'll see. And then I've got a bunch of volunteer dill in here as well. And let me just show you one more thing. I Every year I like to plant some dwarf um, tomatoes in a hanging basket. So up here on the garden shed I've got some tomatoes growing. And we've got a lot of flowers on those, but I don't see any tomatoes set yet. And this is the Little Bites variety that I picked up at a plant swap. Alright, I think that's about it for the garden this time. I'll probably post another update next month. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again soon.